Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on June 22, 2021 at approximately 5.36 p.m. PST. This is going to be a little bit of a different one. Um, basically, it really boils down to a major change that has happened for me now. Like I said, a long time ago, I mentioned this idea that when you've got a goal in mind, get it on paper. Okay, put it, this funny little list that I keep putting together. This one isn't good. Where'd it go? There it is. I keep putting a list together of different things I have to get done. Well, to give you an idea where that has gone at this point, I've managed to complete, well, mostly complete, I signed a contract deal now with Author House to complete the journey of getting my books into print. Now this has taken a long, it's been a long drawn out battle for me. Started way back when I was in grade 10. Okay, and way outside my element where it comes to the marketing side. But the point being, I had a goal in mind. I currently have a lot of it done. About 25% of the saga is now already written. But it's coming out one step at a time. The point being, this is where this is where you have to take a look at if you've got a goal, a major dream in mind, do not give up on it. Mine started in grade 10, which would have put me about 14, 15 years old. I'm now 58, and it's finally in print. I'm finally locking down deals. So not all goals are real short. Okay, sometimes you end up with a, with a goal, with a, an idea in mind that is very quick to come about. Like, for instance, cleaning up the living room. That can take a matter of, a, of half an hour to a couple hours, depending on what state it's in. But when you get the bigger goals, it's absolutely imperative that you get it focused as to what you're looking for, what you're really expecting. And I'll tell you, even with, with guidance from, from professionals, it can be a bit daunting to say the least. But the critical factor is that you don't give up on your dreams. Okay, you may run into, hey, into roadblock after roadblock, but the trick is not to give up on them. Okay, now I came back here for a very simple reason. Okay, now a lot of people on, on the radio show that I'm on I'm on every every Friday, the first Friday of every month, and have been for the last six years on spacedoutradio.com, and a and a radio show called the ET Connection. Now that it was the people on that show that and that really pushed me to start doing the the video broadcast to let people know that things can work, and the message I've returned to give is that working together. If we accept people, if we actually treat each other as we desire to be treated ourselves, we can make this world a much better world for everybody. Now, the nice little part about it is, you know, from my standpoint, it's one step at a time. And, you know, the reality is, you know, for the better portion of the last 10 years, I've been very reclusive. I've stayed away from people on the whole. Although I have gone to speak at conventions when invited. Okay. The last little while I've been spending a staggering amount of time writing. Okay. Net result, I right now have five books actually in print that are available directly through me. You'll find the, the ways to get the titles that I've got listed down below and down below this video. Along with a whole whack of different contact points where if you've got a question from any walk. Okay, whether it's personal, whether it's business, or in the other field I work with, which is aliens and alien technology, potential abductions, that sort of thing. Drop me a line below, I will do my best to give you an answer. Okay, and understand, when I talk about statistics or when I talk about say, the odds of something happening, it's because I've been doing this since I was 10 years old. Okay, I've actually been dealing with the off-worlders since I was born, but that's another part of the story. So, a lot of what you've gone through, I've either dealt with one, you know, some of the 80,000 plus clients that I've dealt with over my life have gone through in all likelihood what you're going through. 
Okay. So, I do come from a base of having a wide array of practical knowledge. I am not a researcher. Okay. So, if, if people are like, people come to me, and what do you know about this thing in the news? Well, the odds are I probably don't know anything about it because I don't watch the news. Okay. But I can tell you, as a spiritual guide, every tool that I offer is a tool that if it applies to my life, I'm personally using it. Okay, if it doesn't apply directly to my life, such as how do you, you know, how do you quit smoking? Now, I've handed that tool to a lot of people that have successfully quit smoking without withdrawals. Okay, now understand that only works if you desire to quit for you. Okay, but it doesn't apply to me personally because frankly I never started and I'll be danged if I'm going to start smoking now. Just to find out if I was right. So, taking a look at that, the tools that I offer, I do personally use. Okay, and this is why I say where it comes to a major goal. Now, for me, one major goal was getting my office straightened out to the point it was functional. And in case you haven't noticed, things have changed in the back. I'll be doing some more. I'm actually looking at this, making notes as it is. About, like, making mental notes as to what has to be cleared up from behind me. Okay. But, the big task I've got in front of me, there's two major tasks I've got. One, is I would really appreciate a thumbs up on this video and, and subscribe to the video. Because one of my major goals with this particular series, with the journey, is to get the message out to everybody on the planet. And that message is simple. We are all of equal value. We are all worth the same amount. Spiritually speaking, we are all starting from the same place. Right here, right now, whatever your life is, this is where you start to change it. But the only person that can change it is you. Now, there are things that will happen that may change your life uncontrollably to you. But I'm referring to the ones that are deliberate changes that you personally would like to see happen. Okay, it will take effort, it will take time. But, when the other part of that is that working together, we can make this a better world for the majority of people. Now, there's always going to be the people that don't like the idea of making this place a more organized world, a more accepting world. Because let's face it, if you want to control people, then having everybody working together is really bad for your for your options. Okay, so I am currently in the process of trying to get things moving so I can actually make things happen. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. I never do. Okay, when I started the journey here, it was to show people one step at a time, which is where this funny little list came in. Okay. One step at a time, put things on, put three things on your list. Okay, keep them to half a minute to 15 minutes to half an hour in length. That way you can get them racked off and you can feel like you've got things accomplished. That would be the first thing. The second thing you look at, okay, the second thing very important from your standpoint is that by doing that you can get the energy in your home running properly that will make the stress in your house go down thereby your energy level goes up net result overall you have a more enjoyable life okay unless of course you're really into the stress thing which i never did understand but i do know some people seem to thrive on it if you're following a spiritual guide that is promoting fearing whatever okay or fearing, or or promotes putting all of your all of the responsibility in a single doctrine instead of in your own actions. Okay, you may have a little bit of a problem because the reality is all the guidelines in the world, all the doctrines in the world, all the written prose don't amount to anything if you don't physically follow the guidelines. And all the tools in the world are useless if you don't pick them up. This is why the tools that I offer people are ones that are tried. And if they apply to me, I have already put them to use. Okay, or I'm in the process of putting them to use. 
Okay, this can be a lot of work. Now, I'm not expecting the world to change overnight. But I will tell you that working together, we can make this world a better place. And if we don't change the way we're going, the, the wonderful little outcome is very simple. Society does the same thing it did when the Roman Empire collapsed, when the Middle Ages came in, when the Black Plague hit. These are repeating themes. Society goes into this bizarre panic and everybody goes to each other's throats. And you end up with decades of conflict. Now we've already had decades of conflict. And I don't know about you, but I'm kind of tired of it. Okay, now as I've told people, I am, I am a very staunch supporter of people that join the military and go out to protect their homeland, to protect their country. I do question the direction that many of the, of the leaders of these, of, these, of these militaries follow. Okay, I question it a lot. Okay, much as I do encourage people to find some sort of support group, be it a church, a temple, a coven, a support group for things like, you know, like alcoholism, like any of the addictions. Okay, find a support group. Find a family. If you don't have a bloodline family you can connect with, find a social family you can connect with. That you can get the support to get through life. Because as the saying goes, no man is an island unto themselves. And for that matter, neither is any woman. Nor any child, any tree, any bear. It doesn't matter. They are all interconnected. But working together, we can make this world run a whole lot more efficiently. The challenge is trying to the challenge is trying to make it work in such a way that you don't feel overwhelmed. Okay, reach out and get the help from the people that have been there. If, for instance, you desire to be a millionaire, I'm probably not the person to talk to. I'm not a millionaire. Okay, do I know how to survive? Do I know how to get things accomplished? Absolutely. But if you're looking at the dollar value, I'm not a millionaire at this point. That's just not the way it works. Okay, so with that in mind, it really boils down to this. Now is the only time in your life that you can ever change anything. You can talk about what you should have done, you know, if I knew now what I, if I knew then what I know now sort of thing. It's a great idea, but it doesn't matter because you can't change what's already gone by. And hoping to change that you may like a change that you put for down the, down the way. You know, I'm going to make this change because I figure in 10 years I'll be happy with it. It's much more efficient to look at what you're not content with now and make that change. Okay, if you, if you don't end up liking the change you make, change it again. You know, it's very easy from that standpoint. This idea that change is painful, change is scary. You know, if you'll notice, my hand moves. Primarily because I fidget a lot. Okay. So, with that in mind, understand change is the one constant in the universe. Now, my last two days, I've spent the majority of the time organizing the, the 12 book saga that I'm writing, the Elder Bocking Chronicles. The first book, well, technically it's the 10th book. But it's the first book of the last of the of the fourth trilogy that is part of this whole saga is already in print. The end of an epic, which is the second the second volume, the second it's a sequel, will be coming out later this year. Okay, and hopefully in the next couple of months, like I've signed all the paperwork now, it's just a case of getting things moving. Because the reality is that I've got the I've got to deal with Author House now. And this is just one of those big goals. The other major goal I've got is something I'll be working on tonight. Which is removing some of that clutter behind me. Okay. Because I know I can't stay sitting at this computer writing all night. Okay, it just doesn't work that way for me. You know, I've got way too many other things that I've got to get done. Besides that, I want to get my glasses off. Because, like I said, I don't actually require my glasses for a lot of things I do now. 
I used to have absolutely no eyesight to speak of. I was one step shy of being legal, legally blind. But I figured out how to cure that, and it turned out I did not need an operation. I did not need medication. I did require discipline. I did require persistence. Net result, and of course, I did require the insight. Net result, I got all of what I required, and now my eyesight works 20-20 for reading. Now, considering it used to be, if I held my glasses right there, I could not physically see my glasses. Now, I can take a sheet of paper with fine writing on it. I can hold it that far away, right there, and I can read it clear as a bell. Okay, which is a heck of a sight better than what it was. But again, this is just an idea that I came up with that I will change the way my life is going. And I'm just not stopping. Okay. Did I understand the way that things were going to work when I signed the one contract? No. And quite frankly, given the amount of change that has happened, it is amazing that anybody works with anything. But I'm not giving up on it. Okay. I have my own frustrations with technology, with my, with what I'm doing, that sort of thing. Okay, but if you've got a big goal, okay, if you want to become an actor, if you desire to become an author, you desire to become a singer, do not give up on it. Okay, keep pushing your dream, but remember, you still require an income to cover the things that you're doing. You still require that. Okay, so have a backup. You know, and for those of you that are considering the idea of dropping out of school altogether, understand it may not be a great setup, but it may be the best one you've got. Okay, and it will, in, it will in, introduce you to things that you're not even aware you may like. Okay, this is where it becomes a necessity to really expand your, your horizons Take a look at what you're not content with. If you're not content with it, pick whatever it is. Just pick three things to start with. Each one 15 minutes to a half hour long. Okay. Write them down and start working on them. When you get one done, check it off and add another to the list. Okay. This way you'll keep things moving. You'll make those little successes and you'll start to feel as though you've been more, and that you've got more accomplished. I would love to know what's wrong with my lungs right now, but what the heck. Okay, that sometimes becomes a problem. I'm guessing too much stress. But, you know, I do my best to function with that. But you work with it. This is, in case you forgot, this is a live recording, which means I do not go back and edit anything. When I'm done the recording, I will check to make sure I got the date right, and then it goes up as is. All the hiccups, all the bumps and, and twitches, you know, the whole nine yards. Okay, so from that standpoint, I'm very cautious at the beginning to try and get the date right, because if I mess it up, then I end up having to go back and redo the whole thing. Okay, but I will tell you, Working together, following the three karmic laws. Be true to yourself. Do unto others as you desire them to do unto you. Energy out, energy in. You follow the, those three laws. If you look at the guidelines of any of the religions, most of the religions, I can't say it for certain for all of them. Most of the religions, the old, the what they call New Age spiritual beliefs, the 12-step programs, if you take a look at them, what what I do believe you will find is that they all fit inside those three laws. Okay, that's why those are the only three I work with. You know, the best the best way I put I heard it put when I was taking business in high school was keep it simple, stupid, aka the kiss method. If you want to be a little bit more polite, keep it simple, silly. Okay, but the point being. If you make things simple, okay, and you go at them one step at a time, there's an old African proverb that goes, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you move a mountain? One shovelful at a time. 
Okay, it may take a long time to get things turned around, but you got to remember, you did not get to the state you're currently in by walking, you know, you didn't get to that current state by just overnight and it just happened. It took you years to get to where you are. The odds are it'll take you years to get back. However, I do know for an absolute certainty, with guidance, you can make that journey a lot faster. If you've got to figure it out yourself, it may be a problem. Picture learning to ride a bike. If somebody is there to say, here's how you learn, you'll be a lot more efficient at it, and you'll miss a lot of bumps and hiccups. Kind of like learning to drive a car. If you get an instructor that knows what they're doing, and they show you how to do it, okay, you won't run into half as many walls. Mathematics is the same idea. If you take somebody that shows you how math works, then you don't have to figure out how it works all together. Okay. I mean, picture what would happen if we had to each invent our own language in order to learn how to talk. Okay, these are all things that other people have taught us. Now, they've also taught us fear, prejudice, greed. These are not so good. Okay. But when you look at the at the at the law of do unto others as you desire them to do unto you, you'll find you can override a lot of those. Okay. Now, for me, it's a real simple issue. I've got some very big goals in mind. I have no idea how I'm going to get through them aside from call a friend over and see if they can help me walk through it. And one step at a time is the way I will do that. Okay, it's just that simple. But, as it was put to me, okay, the best tools in the world are useless if people don't pick them up. I currently have access to tools. I don't even understand most of them. But then, I mean, I figure I'm doing good just getting the video out. This is one of the reasons I don't edit it. Is because the two reasons are, one, I am the way I am. If you run into me in person, you'll find I talk exactly the same way. And yeah, I tend to talk with my hands a lot. But you'll find I talk exactly the same way. I trip over my words just as much. So when I'm doing a live recording, it's like, this is the way I am. You don't have to try and figure out if I'm the same person. You'll figure it out when you meet me. If you ever meet me, that is. Of course, that might be tricky. I spend a lot of my time at home hiding from people. Okay. I don't live up in the bush. I don't live out in the middle of nowhere. I always I always find it fascinating when people say, I'm a spiritual guide and I'm here to lead you to a better life. So come out in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, that is not the best. You know, come out in the middle of nowhere where it's all, in, it's all caged in and we've got lots of weapons. This is not a peaceful approach. War has never brought peace. War has brought quiet. Okay. If war had brought peace, we wouldn't have so many wars going on around the world. Okay. So, like I said, it is very important that we realize that working together, we can end war, we can end famine, we can learn that greed is useless, Okay, envy is, is not a bad thing. Envy is where you look at something and go, gee, I wish I knew how to do that. And then you go out, you ask the person, and they show you how to do it, and then you strive for your own betterment, not necessarily to be better than them. Jealousy is that nasty other side of it that goes, I want what you have, so I'm going to find a way to take it from you, or to make you feel worse so that I feel better, which is what bullies usually do. Okay. They try and make the people around them feel absolutely miserable so that they feel that they're feeling better. I never understood it myself. I went, I dealt with a lot of bullies growing up. But, like I said, if you've got questions, if you've got, and it doesn't matter what the topic. I started working with people's relationships. I, moved, I got involved with the aliens and, and the abductions and that sort of thing. The paranormal is just my normal life. You know, paranormal basically means kind of normal. Okay, well, kind of normal is what my life has always been. But for me, it's very normal. Okay, what many people call, call really weird, 
like when people deal with hauntings. Okay, for me, having ghosts walk through the house is just plain. That's common day. Okay. When I'm looking at writing, for me, like I got up this morning. Between yesterday and this morning, I went through something in the neighborhood. I give you an actual, oh, hmm, thought it was open, but apparently not. So I'm just going to open it up here so I can actually see it. And over the last couple of days, there it is, I went through 1,300 pages, okay, of writing, okay, in order to make sure I had the chapters in, in 12 different books all in the right order, right, and all covering the right things. This is just one of the tools that I use. But it was one step at a time. But that's 1,300 pages. That's a staggering amount of writing. Now, to be blunt, it's 1,300 pages, which was 290,000 words over the last couple of days. Now, considering I was only scanning, I was not looking to edit all of it. I was only scanning it to make sure I had it right and like had them all in the right order. So it's not quite as, as complicated. But I started my day off opening up 13 files to do it. And that's just where it started. At one point in point, I think I had like 18 files up and running all at the same time. The, you know, this is why I've got a, a computer system that has three screens. So that I can actually keep, I don't have enough screen space half the time. And this is just one of the coping mechanisms. Now, I am still a firm believer that paper and pen works better than works better than computers for me anyway computers i like the way it was put in one in one business i saw years ago there was business that wrote on the on that had a sign on their wall to err is human to really foul things up requires a computer okay for instance if you take a if you take a, a file full if you take a filing cabinet like this one right here okay if I spill, you know, if I spill a cup of coffee that ends up getting into one of the drawers, don't ask me how I do that, I don't know. You end up getting a few sheets wet. If you, th if you spill a cup of coffee onto a computer, you wipe out your entire database. Okay, now that really is where, the, where it all boils down to. Okay, but very important that you get, if you're not content with the way your life is, very important to start altering it. And right now, right this moment where you're sitting, this is where to start. Now, with that in mind, I've got to get back to doing some other things, and we're just approaching the half hour mark. So again, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share it with everybody you can. I would love to see this message get out to the world that working together, we can make this a better world for virtually everybody. Until I talk again tomorrow, take care of yourselves and each other, and for pity's sakes, stay positive.